So there's one of those great, powerful organizations in Colorado not many people have heard of. It's called Colorado Concern. The man who runs it all is Mike Cop, my old friend. How are you? Good, John. You miss I was wondering if I was on the list anymore. I haven't been no, back for no, a long no. time. <laughs> I don't like any of my friends anyway. You miss the legislature? Yeah, in a lot of ways I do, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm kind of a policy geek. You and I go back quite we'll a ways. Walk, and, walk and out. I, yeah, and I like the fact that um, at the State House you can work on things that matter to people um, and you can work on things that don't matter to people and a lot of people do that, but you can actually work on things that, that need to to get done and you can pull resources together to get them done in terms of one you know brain high and, school there you know it well it is, it is. everybody and up and everybody in else more ways than yeah, yeah in more ways than one in more ways than one Colorado I, concern has been around for a 30 long, years 30 years about this the year. same same amount of time as Independence Institute yeah. and I have a, still to this day have a hard time giving Colorado concern a label yeah. because it seems like a whole bunch of different weird business guys get together and they just do whatever the hell they want to do. That, that's Colorado <laughs> concern. I never know what it's going to be from one year to the other. Give, help me. Yeah, sure. Help me solidify what what the organization. Sure, is. Sure, I will. It's it's a CEO membership organization. So, uh, 30 years ago, you had a small group of CEOs that said this. They said, "We want to get together and, and create as short a distance between us and seeing policy change that's good in the state happen." And so that's what they did. They don't do a lot of, as I had it put to me one time, they don't do a lot of care and feeding events. They just want to get together and they want to effectuate good policy right. change. So they, it, they ask. This is a rich guy organization. These, these well, are CEOs. Yeah, see, yeah that's right. Uh, all CEOs. How many you have CEOs? To be, uh, coming close to 120 now. Wow. Uh, we have that's some pretty good. Yeah, we have some nonprofit ones, and you know, we're I'm getting a around the state. I never, I never got invited to be in that you're, group. Well, it's because you're on a special schedule, so <laughs> you're, yeah, you're a little bit higher price to get you in. But well, we, you know, you come back down. Never, never even invented, <laughs> never went to the uh, rush meeting either. Never <laughs> once. All right, so these, these are, these are guys who are good businessmen, <clears throat> different sizes, and of women, business, and women. Yes, and they're they're really uh, amazing stories, each and every one of them. It's so true. But I look through the roster of yeah. people who make up this effectuate change, I'm going, this is schizophrenic. You've got, you know, Larry Mizell on one side, and you've got Tim Gill on the other side. Yeah. You've got, what the hell do they ever <laughs> agree on that that you would that be is? you would be surprised. Surprised. Um, and as it's as its executive director, I must say, I'm delightfully um, surprised with it. <laughs> really? Actually, I, well, I, the truth I, of the matter I, is, your job. I, this is a job I wouldn't want to take because yeah, it's, CEOs it, are a different breed. They're yeah. used to getting things done. Yes. Make a decision, get it done. And in the world of politics, you make a decision and try to influence in order to get. Something. There's not. There's no button unless you're Donald Trump. There's no button that just says change the world and and get it done. Yes, that's right. I've been looking for that button for a but, long time. Uh, no, you know. These, these are members just like anybody, any, anybody else in society. They have a whole range of issues that they care about, and they choose to focus on a few things that, A, um, need to be done around the state, things like transportation, just as an example, um, things where they could have, they, they could make a difference. And it would improve, um, you know, the situation economically in the state for businesses, but it would, but it would provide, um, you know, policy changes that helps everybody prosper. And that, that, it, that you're sounds laughing. So it sweet. sounds like that sounds no, but it's so the, sweet and adorable. The, <laughs> yeah. I, I I will tell you the truth about it. I um, was speaking with one of our member CEOs not long ago, somebody that you would know, all your listeners would would know, and we were talking about a particular policy area at the state house this year. Um, actually, this in, this man, he's interested in seeing this. It's a construction defects um, reform mm -hmm. issue, and. Actually, it's sort of to his detriment, uh, in, in a sense, because um, if there are some good reforms brought about uh, legislatively, uh, it actually makes it harder f for him, in a sense, for because it'll help his competition. He said, look, it, you know, it's about jobs. It's about people's ability in the state of Colorado to get a job and to move into a house. Associations are tough to begin with. Yeah. I think about you know, whether it's a car dealers association or the builders association or these political groups. Inside, you've got competitors who hate each other, but they, they have a common interest in this and that. Colorado Concern <laughs> is people who have all different industries well, getting together, yeah. trying to decide on, on different things. Let's, let's talk a couple specifics. Uh, there's going to be an initiative on the ballot to raise our taxes to the highest income tax level in the country, 
and buy ourselves some some wonderful uh, free health care because that's it's, right. it's free. Uh, it's yeah. called Colorado Care, and, yeah. and have you guys taken a position on We've, this, and are you going to get involved? We are going to be very involved in Colorado Care, Amendment 69. Um, yeah, our board saw this uh, last fall coming and said immediately, this is, this is something that we have to stop. It wouldn't be good for the state. We, we see this and um, the attacks that will come this year again on oil and gas production in the state really is defining issues for the state. If, 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 if the proponents of Amendment 69 and the oil and gas bans are successful this fall, um, it will set Colorado back dramatically. So Amendment 69, yeah, you're right. It moves us to the highest uh, income tax uh, level in the country, 14 percent. Which, which just brings businesses in. Yeah, they, they thrive. They, they like, they, they they like, like the higher taxes. taxes. That's right. It's good yeah. for jobs. Everybody knows that. Right. Uh, yeah, it's a 10 percent tax, um, about 6.67 uh, percent, I think, is paid on the employer side. 3.33 is paid on the employee side. Can stop you imagine? You, stop you that there yeah. for a second, because people don't get that. <clears throat> people who love tax increases love making sure they're not transparent. This is why on employer taxes, you pay half and they pay half. You don't think about what the right. important. Well, that's money that would have gone to you. This one, it's not even that. They're going to have your employer pay it all, making it look like it's not costing you as much. But really, this is this is taking us from about a uh, four and a half, five percent tax right. all the way and add ten points to it. This That's is right. this is huge. And then federal tax. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, you know. But it's, it's going to be great for business, I hear, because well, it's going to yeah. it it'll be great for business in places like Texas. No, people will be getting medical care here, and that means doctors and nurses and hospitals will be fully funded. We'll be able to get more services. They're right. going to have to buy more supplies. Right. You know, uh, Pat Stryker and Stryker Incorporated is going to sell more medical equipment. So uh, I think something else will happen, John. I'm glad to hear that the Independence Institute thinks that this is yeah, a good thing. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping <laughs> we're, we're right behind it. It'll be good for business in places like Texas. Uh, because business owners and business leaders will see this uh, for what it is. Um, some will move out for sure. Uh, you will have others that simply will not relocate to the state of Colorado. John, this is, it's a $25 billion, I know you are familiar with the numbers, but it's $25 billion annual and that's the floor. So they're going to collect this tax from everybody, on, including on some on pensions, and um, they're going to put a $25 billion kitty together and they're going to cover everybody. So. Really, only one of two things can happen. Uh, you're either going to have to ration health care to keep that price down, or you're going to have to have continuing, uh, you know, a continuing increase to keep in that taxes. Which one do you think will happen? In, in perspective, you're taking what the state government spends right. every year, yeah. and you are doubling you're it. You're doubling it overnight. Worse than that, you are giving the power to spend that $25 billion for your health care and mine uh, into the hands of 21 people. So 21 people will run this behemoth. Uh, they, will, they will have the authority, if you can believe this, to increase taxes annually. People that do not even pay into the system will have an opportunity to vote, to have uh, taxes increased so that, so that care can be, can be increased. Bring it back to Colorado Concern. So you've got the CEOs who look at this and they understand business and they say this is going to be bad for our businesses right. or business in general. What, what do you do about it? What does Colorado Concern do? Because it's nice for Colorado Concern to say this is a bad idea, we're against it. But in order to kill a bad idea, those CEOs are going to have to open up their wallets and try to fight it. Do they well, do that? They do. They will. Yeah, yes, certainly. Um, we've already invested quite a bit of money. Um, Colorado Concern has. Uh, there will be more to come. We are in the process now, in fact, of asking our members um, to to kick in to this effort. So we'll we'll be very involved with that. Uh, actually, we've got a couple of our members are involved um, in the executive committee. You know, that is this this group of of leaders from around town that are working on killing this thing. It'll be Republicans and Democrats, and uh, yeah, we're all in. So, so we'll do things like raise money, and you need to. It's, this is not cheap, as we were talking about before, to, to do these statewide campaigns. Uh, Talk to me about oil and gas. The problem is it could pass. It could pass. As crazy as that is, we've looked at some polling, it could pass. Um, we're going to fight it. <laughs> it can't pass. I will put 20 bucks on it. Everybody, we're, we're said, not, everybody said marijuana will not pass. Who said that? You did. 
I never You're said part so. of everybody. I never said any such thing. All right, oil and gas things. Yeah. I mean, this 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 is a double whammy for Colorado. Not only yeah. massive tax increase, but then also oil and gas. Uh, although with oil and ga oil at thirty dollars a barrel, right. it's not as if fracking is going crazy in Colorado any longer. People are pulling out. Yeah. Um, you know, this this is a double whammy. Are most of your people? In these businesses of either healthcare or oil and gas, no. Is, that, is, is this an industry group and no. they're just protecting their own? No, we, in fact, uh, uh, the folks that are in healthcare and our membership and in oil and gas probably would constitute a minority in both cases. Well, the, well they would. Um, uh, the fact is, our board, especially when it looks at the, the issue of oil and gas, our board really looks at this as an existential threat. If oil and gas is is um, run out of the state, as it could be, literally, if uh, a couple of these ballot measures pass. They're that bad. Um, it'll be the end of production in the state. So, for example, one of them, uh, one of them will ask for a 2,500 foot setback, a half mile setback. So people that don't know what a setback is, that basically says any time you're going to put new production in the ground, you're going to have a new well, you've got to be 2,500 feet from any structure, but beyond that, you've got to be 2,500 feet from other specialty designated areas, so places where water can collect. It works kind of like waters of the U.S. in that sense. So I've seen a map of Weld County. Almost 90% of the state's oil and gas production is in Weld County, which is kind of amazing. Um, I've seen a map of Weld County, and there's little circles by every single well site that could be developed. John, it's a ban. It's, it's a ban. ban in Weld County, and it's a $30 billion industry in the state. Bad so, idea. So on one level, we're going to have a, a tax increase to pay for health care, right. which means we're going to need to have a lot of businesses paying a lot of money into this, but then we have another initiative potentially that will drive businesses away even faster. This Colorado could become the wasteland it once was uh, hundreds of years ago. These are defining issues, and we're going to get Gotta involved run. and stop them. Mike, thank you from Colorado Concern. Listen Thanks, for Sean. me on KHOW Radio. Check out the Independence Institute. We'll see you later.